and you're watching check me right here on roots tv nigeria we have with us today a very vocal critic of the government and a basically a very vocal person when it comes to all things concerning the government. We've had her before on the show, and this time it's good to have her back, Aisha Yesufu. Our conversation today is tailoring to it the red card movement's endorsement of Atiku Abubakar as their presidential candidate or preferred presidential candidate as we head to the polls in the next few hours. Good to have you, Aisha. Thank you for having me. All right. So when we had this conversation prior, you had issues with the declaration of red card movement, their support for Atiku Abubakar in terms of the presidential election. Why? When you put it that way, I have issues. It's as if I'm not a member of the red card movement. I'm a member of the red card movement and there's no endorsement of anyone. The red card movement has not endorsed any candidate and will not endorse any candidate. L let me it's a non-partisan movement. L let me understand this. I had on my show Tony Akubona, who is a co-convener. I had on my show um, um, uh, Opalwa. He is the champion for Kugi State. Though they were not on camera, I had a lot of different champions from different states come to my show, and they said the Red Card Movement is endorsing Atiku Abubakar. Now you just a member of the red card movement you are saying that is not true do you think in your capacity as just a member you can speak for the red card movement it feels like you're you've gone rogue you're a renegade in this situation well first of all i'm not just a member of the okay. red card movement i'm a co-convener which you step of the considering of that the, you decided you wanted to work with obvious when exactly she declared her that's, presidential that's what we are going to and yes. if you allow me we okay. would get there so okay. it's time to have a okay. conversation okay so first of all, I'm a co-convener of the Red Card Movement. Dr. Obiezo Kwesile is the convener of the Red Card Movement. And thank God you did mention the fact that I stepped down. That's what people who have integrity do. When I wanted to be partisan, to support and endorse a candidate, Dr. Obiezo Kwesile running on the ACPN platform, I did the right thing. I stepped down. Dr. Obiezo Kwesile is the convener of Red Card Movement. When she decided to be partisan, to run as a candidate, a presidential candidate, she he stepped down. That's what people with integrity do. She did not drag the red card movement along with her. I stepped down, two other co-conveners stepped down, three of us stepped down to go be partisan. And that was the same thing that doc Dr. Tony Akabuno was supposed to do. When we stepped down, Dr. Obi being the co-convener as a leader stepped down, we decided to make them two of them co-chair. Mm -hmm. It was decided upon, we stepped down with a re-entry, automatic re-entry uh, policy if we want to come back. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing something on your own, you do not drag a movement, an organization into it. Except people who are faceless, nameless, and voiceless. Hold on, okay. let, me, let me finish my okay. thought. People who on their own do not have credibility are people who will take on a movement and decide to take it alone. If I want to endorse a candidate, I don't need red card movement. I myself, as Aisha Yusuf, I would do you that. And you know one thing, I want hold, Tony. Listen, you already hold on, no, just hold on, let me finish this thought. Well, hold, exactly. He should build his personality. Dr. Tony Akabuno should build his personality and be able to boldly, like a human being, stand and endorse any candidate. You don't go hiding. He's faceless, he's nameless, he's voiceless. If you mention Aisha Yusufu, endorsing well, a anyone. Of, a lot of people Exactly. Know so he needs to work on that. He shouldn't use other people's integrity and values. All right. So, you know, you watched that conversation that I had with him. And, of course, I did uh, speak to him and other members of the Red Card Movement, asking why, after all of this, while you have said you are partisan, and really the idea of the Red Card Movement was to give a red card to the recycled politicians, the same set of politicians. So it was a little bit hypocritical. I remember using that word on the show, that they would turn around and endorse one of those people. They have spent months, you have spent months, you know, I wouldn't use the word bashing in this situation, you but criticizing. Criticizing, well, bashing and no, criticizing really. for a very long time, giving different names to. So it felt a bit hip hypocritical at that time. But well, here's my question to you. Um, you said you stepped down as a co-convener, yes? Since you have stepped down, that means you're just a member. And the authority, I mean, I believe the management, as they were sitting there, decided to endorse. Hopefully, obviously, because it's a, a democratic organization, they would have spoken to other members. But how do you know they didn't speak to other members? From what I understand, that party has about over 3,000 plus, according to him, members across Nigeria. So how do you know majority of them were not spoken to, like he said? 
Like he said, and they agreed to endorse Atiku Abubakar. And you're just one lone voice, a member who is uncomfortable with what they have done because it doesn't work with the Aisha Yesufu um, persona. So first of all, like I did correct you before, and I hope you're having a conversation yes. where you are listening. Yes. I'm not a member. I'm a co-convener who has stepped down. I'm back into being a co-convener. Oh, so you need to. Back. So I let's. Oh, the, I I, the okay, part. you need to listen. Yes, so let's have a part let's part have a conversation. So okay. who, who is back? But you said something. It didn't seem hypocritical. It is actually hypocritical. The red card movement was built on the tenets of giving red card to bad governance, giving red card to recycled politicians who have continuously given us bad governance, giving specifically red card to APC and PDP because this is yes, a party that is more or less the same thing who move from one place part to the other and do the same thing. There are about 10 co-conveners uh, co and see. out of them, two have decided they want to go and do their own thing. Just the way at one time, three of us decided to do our own I thing, see. so we stepped down. Two now decided, what are they supposed to do? Step down. There are other co-conveners who are not going along with this. There are other state chambers who are not going along with it. There are other uh, members who are infuriated. Because you know something? I watched Dr. Tony Akabono talking about strategy Strategy. Let yes, me tell you something. Hold on. Yes, there's nothing strategic about having no integrity. There's nothing strategic about having no values. There's nothing strategic about being a political jobber. There's nothing strategic about being a political entrepreneur. Strategy is when you stay true to your values. Strategy is when you say it is about the nation, not about the personal benefit. Strategy is when for you, it is not about who is most likely to win so that you jump on their train and be able to get something out of it. But to say that, who is the person that is most suited for Nigeria? And that's what Red Card Movement is all about. Red Card Movement has said to Nigerians, look at every candidate. Why did they endorse only the presidential candidate? Don't we have gubernatorial candidates? Don't we have na uh, National Assembly having candidates? Mm -hmm. If Red Card Movement is going to endorse candidates, then it must endorse across, across all God. But so what we did was to say to the people, look out for three C's competence, character, capacity, and judge every candidate based on that and vote. Don't go after party, go after the people. And right now we are adding another C, mm. which is courage. Mm. A lot of people don't have courage. People are voting out of fear. People want to be on the winning team. Let me finish this thought. You know, yes. he said it was our strategy. And uh, here is what he said. You know, uh, we will play some excerpts of that interview on this one. You know, I remember him saying that after looking at everything, it was about giving a red card to the APC, this particular administration, which they believe wasn't doing very well. And after consultation, and looking strategically, they figured it was Atiku Abubakar who had the ability to give that red card, you know, to the APC-led government at the moment. So it was more about strategy and getting rid of this so, certain so like, kind of bad government. Like, but, but could I ask you one yeah, question? When did you come back as a co-convener? As soon as uh, I, I, Dr. Obi uh, had stepped down I see. from this, and so I was no longer... Okay, that's roughly about so, 48 hours before we had that so conversation I, with them. So yeah. She had, that was be, be, right before, so we it came back be. into being... It, it, uh, what's the, the process of coming back as a co-convener? What's as your process? So yes. the process that we had was the fact that ultimately you can step down, Mm -hmm. And then when you're done, Do you have to write. You, well, we did. Yeah, we did an email mm -hmm. to say we are stepping down. Mm -hmm. And so I find him using a lot of the word resigned. I mean, people should le learn to say things as they are. There is no need for half truths and innuendos. It was stepping down, and we okay. have mails to that. And then when you we're coming back in, you're we right. just write back to say I'm coming back I based see. on the automatic re-entry. I, I don't know. Thank God we and have all. Of, I, I guess we we did. We had all all, all of that. And you did that email. We, too. Absolutely, I did that email Can back you, to to the. Will we be able to see that? I can't share an email that is for the group. But if the <laughs> okay, red card movement okay. wants to share with okay, you, okay. yeah, of course, I don't do that. For me, everything is about integrity and one must do the right thing. So if for me, let me tell you something. I think I need to let Nigerians understand that, you know, the issue of leadership, it's not like being a fan. We are citizens in this nation. So it's not like saying, oh, who do I think will likely win? Let me join the person so that I will have those good moments of carrying the uh, cup, you know, when your, your team wins and all of that. No, it's the business of ensuring who is the person that is best suited to, to serve this nation, that is best suited to now, take now, us to now where now we are supposed to be. Now that is no longer in the race, let's ask that question because I remember the various occasions that I have spoken to you. You were very passionate. You were very sure this is a person who is 
going to do the right thing according to you and to a lot of people who believe in your ideals when she becomes president. Right now, she has stepped out, stepped down. She is dropped out of the race. So the ACPN has to either, her name is still, the party is still there, but not she, she's not part of the race on Saturday. Now, what happens? What what was the support like? Who then is the next likely candidate that you are, you have been, or you will be talking about right now? Because when you say to Nigerians, okay, go out and vote. I remember you, various videos you've been saying, oh, yes, equally. Now, what happens? There's nobody to point people to. You said, you said the thing is that we, we tend to look at Nigerians as if they are all little kids. Every Nigerian that is supposed to be is from 18 and above. And that's what we have said to people, look for the three C's. We must put Nigerians and empower them in such a way that they are able to make critical decisions. People just sit down and assume that you're going to tell somebody who to vote for. Who do you think we should vote for now? No, that is wrong. The mentality of us being... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Hold okay. on. Of telling people this is whom you have to vote okay. for it's wrong i my candidate is dr obeza kwesele i know she has everything that it takes if she has been an exemplary leader she has shown nigeria nigerians have always thought they can't have a leader who will do the right thing from nigeria she listened to the yearnings of the people who were demanding for coalition 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 the rest she was working with all the candidates they were not ready to come forward she did what most nigerians thought was impossible for any leader in nigeria to do was to step down and say look i'm putting that man because yeah. let's do this for nigeria yeah. It's amazing that you brought this up. Since you have gone into that conversation, I'm going to go after it. A lot of times, a lot of people I've spoken to, I mean, Dr. Fashua even said that I have heard from some people who haven't been very vocal enough to say, many people blame her for the failure, would I say, of IPAC. Um, um, uh, yeah, seriously. Yeah, so She's supposed people, to carry the problem of Nigeria on her head. Well, they blame her okay. for, that, for that consensus candidate, which Durotoye emerged as the um, consensus candidate. And of course, all of that didn't work out. And you know how, what happened. People believe that she was an umpire who was supposed to be unbiased and then less than six weeks later she goes out to become to say she wants to become a presidential candidate she becomes one and then just a few weeks to the elections she drops out for a lot of people they look at obi as a question as a person who hasn't entirely made up her mind about what she is supposed to be or how here maybe how she is supposed to contribute to the growth of this country because obviously the intent is right believably but maybe how is probably what she's trying to figure out are you done? I am done. Because I need, I need the time to talk all and right. I don't want to interrupt you. So take great. a seat. Yeah, this. let's yes, take this. I'm ready for First this. of all, I look, you know, I look at Dr. Obi and I always, always say to her, she's a single parent of this nation. We all are cowards. We sit down in our houses. We absolutely do nothing. We want Dr. Obi as a question to carry everything in this nation on her head. Every leader that has turned their back, he saw her back on Nigeria. We go after them. We fawn after them. This is a woman who could afford to stay away and enjoy her life. But she decided she needs to fight for Nigeria. And that's what she's doing everything. But you know, I do understand when people are in an abusive relationship, they always, anybody that comes to rescue them, they go after that person. That's what Nigeria is right now. We are in an abusive relationship and anytime we see somebody and the person who comes to rescue us is Dr. Obi as a question so it's very easy to go at her rather than to go at our abusers so having said that you know you need to take a back seat because I'm going to do a long explanation <laughs> so having said that you understand the most important is that she came out packed they reached out to her and said to her they wanted her to be an umpire she wasn't the only umpire there are about three of them there was even an organization that was I think enough is enough was part of that mm -hmm. there's another man again I've yeah, forgotten yeah. his name I'm very poor with name he was part of that they called her because of her integrity and they wanted her to ensure that the process they were going through was fair she they wrote her a letter she accepted she went there on, on, on that part and remember let me just uh, i remember tony akabunu saying something about her and pa she never brought red card movement into the issue of part if you notice nobody ever called because she went there in her individual capacity and so when she went there she refreed it the way it was supposed to be and when she did that refree she left they came, they had their, their, their conversation. Somebody emerged as winner. I remember getting a, converse, uh, a phone call from her immediately after, after the pact. She was a broken person. The Red Card Movement had organized sort at Summit of the Alternatives where we wanted people to come together and be an alternative. It didn't happen. After the pact, she was broken because she saw people she thought 
hold on i thought you're gonna take a back seat mm -hmm. and I, i'm gonna get it i want a raw <laughs> copy of this because i want everything i say All right. so when she, when they will not go and she saw the kind of people who were supposed to be alternative behaving the same way like the old order she was broken when nigeria was became 80 million people into poverty she decided let me do this she never wanted to do it even in her acceptance speech she said something i'm not a politician i hate politics i still do and she talked about coalition being where it is she still listened to i know nigerians are not used to people listening to them they used to leaders talking uh, whenever they talk they don't uh, take them as as important enough she listened to people yearning for coalition and, and then she decided right. to drop her own personal ambition and ask the other people to have a coalition she called them together it hasn't happened i think nigeria should have the guts to blame those who haven't done well by them well, not still, dr but, but you still really haven't answered my question two things the first thing is a lot of people look at the fact that she has gone through all this rigors more like she hasn't really figured out like I said, the intent, I don't think people question the intent of Obi as a question to do the right thing for this country because she's got her track record. But for some people, they feel that she hasn't really sat down and figured out how to do that. Secondly, why has Obi as a question stayed away from the media? I mean, the last time you people had a, wet, a world press conference, she didn't take questions. There are so many questions and there's so many issues that come and people, some people have done very well in painting a dent in her integrity. I would have thought that at this time, because as she was very available during her campaign, right now she would be willing to at least sit down with whoever it is she chooses to to have these kinds of conversations and clear these things herself instead her surrogates i'm sorry to say that people like you are the ones who are speaking for her why doesn't she speak she's a very bold and vocal woman why isn't she talking a lot of her supporters want to hear from her beyond just how much money she spent in the come on money is one thing yes accountability is great but people want to understand she has her followers and her believers people want to understand people who followed her that close and now she drops out with what that's why i was trying to get to you to say now you have said to us go to obvious as a question a lot of people who believe in that now she's dropped out do you not feel that some people feel left out some people feel without like a single mother you said she is without a mother entirely they should be a direction what is obvious the question is direction to her followers why isn't she having these conversations you're a great sport but why isn't she talking yes. when you have a conversation with somebody you need to listen i think right now you're not listening <sighs> when i did my so calm down and listen because it's all about a two-way conversation i explained to you all about what she i don't think you did because the first question i did explain to you all about how did she enter it i told you she had no intention of doing this she did it because of the state of the nation we don't seem to understand that nigeria is on the brink it needs rescue and when she came in she has always said she would be that leader with integrity and values and not even if it means step, even if it means even if it means having to give up halfway even if it means gloria we are having grace. a conversation can you let me finish because when you gave that your long uh, question which was almost like a paragraph i gave you all the time in the world to be uh, okay. able to finish okay. and because you're not listening to me you're jumping into the but conversation and that i'm not saying? you you need to hear me out it's not for you to agree or not I'm you are I'm listening. A, a journalist and it's not for you to have an opinion it's I for you exactly because you know you saying you reason, want me to listen to you this conversation is because i did speak to a member of your movement and you disagreed with what he said and that we had why, left that now you're yeah, talking about that's dr obese question so that's that what we're doing right I'm now giving you a precedence for why we're having this conversation i'm a journalist and i don't have an opinion i want all sides i just you just said you want i wanted yeah. you to agree i wasn't asking you to agree i don't well, need you i'm, I'm the kind of person i'm i'm good being alone i don't need anybody agreeing with me so when you just mentioned that let you know aisha that i have listened to a lot of people who are against and that's why i'm bringing these questions to hold you. on yeah I'm, I'm, I'm when i'm yeah. talking about the question you need to sit back and let me finish all right we, we have to okay i am i'm not going to say anything for the next two minutes so that we can round up i'm here i'm here no more talking we are well when when you broke into into my i wanted to know why she dropped out even though she may people may be disappointed with that decision yeah no there are people who are not uh, undoubtedly there are because they know she's the best candidate and every there are people who have got their pvcs because they were uh, just because of her but look let me tell you something we need to have leaders who care about the people it's not about ambition so it's not about oh i have to go all the way even when my people this is what they're yearning for we have gotten a leader who has shown us that leadership is about listening to the yearnings of the people and going by it and most nigerians 
The same Nigerians were yearning for a coalition because they needed that force that they felt would go against the number of words that we have given red card to APC and PDP. And when they did that, when the, the cry kept on going, she decided to step there. If she didn't, she would be like any one of them. And that is not what uh, we, we are looking for. She wanted and so she made that decision. So in terms of taking that, oh, she doesn't know what she did, she doesn't, that is absolutely wrong. Nigeria should be in a place where we understand that we are citizens, we hold the power, we are the ones that the leaders are supposed to be listening to, the leaders are supposed to be dancing to our yearnings as citizens and not us dancing to them as right. citizens. For me particularly, for me, Aisha Yesufu, my candidate still remains Dr. Obi Ezekwesele. I don't vote out of fear. I don't vote out of conviction. I don't care what the popular opinion is. All I care I about is ensuring is I am telling you, I am voting. You are not listening. I am so voting for Dr. Obi Ezekwesele. Come February 16th, 2019. I don't vote out of fear. I don't that. listen to me. I don't vote out of fear. I don't vote out of conviction. I vote the person that I know is right. I want to stand before my grandchildren in the next 40 years, inshallah, and say to them, I voted with you in mind. And so before we go, mm -hmm. the red card movement mm -hmm. has never and will never endorse anyone. Even when Dr. Obi, who is the convener of Red Card Movement, she, we, didn't, we didn't endorse. She stepped down. And anybody who wants to endorse a candidate should go ahead and do that on their own terms. They should use the credibility that they have built. There's nothing strategic about having no integrity. Thank you. We, we, we have to round up this conversation, even though there are a thousand and one questions still in my head, but my producers are telling me to round up. Well, I guess we'll probably have more conversations uh, uh, concerning this even after the elections because beyond just yeah, electing absolutely. a leader beyond absolutely. just electing a leader governance is more than an election yes, is beyond right. election yes. all right you've been watching check me right here of feisty conversation with of course i say yes i mean you you couldn't have been expecting anything less please go to the comment section of this video and give us your thoughts about the things that we have discussed right here on the show my name is gloria oji emodi and you are watching roots tv nigeria